and Hispanics across California and the nation who don't work in agriculture are better off today because of what the farm workers taught people about organization, about pride and strength, about seizing control over their own lives. And the children and grandchildren of poor Hispanics are moving out of the fields and out of the barrio and into the professions and into business and into politics. And that movement cannot be reversed. Our union will forever exist as an empowering force My name is Emilio Huerta. I am an attorney. I am also a general counsel for the Dolores Huerta Foundation, and I represent other community-based nonprofit organizations uh, throughout California. So my uh, entry into the political arena, um, officially, I guess, I think that was in uh, 2016, of course, the union had always been very political, and there had always been a political component to our work in terms of getting the Agricultural Labor Relations Act passed in 1975. Uh, we did a, a ton of political work. I remember in the 70s that um, the UFW sent not only the, the workers, but their money uh, to LA, to get the Latino legislators, Art Torres, Richard Ala Torres, Esteban Torres, all these folks, and then in Congress, Edward Ball, you know, the CSO, one of their first victories in, I think, the, uh, the uh, early 60s or late 50s was getting uh, the first Latino ever elected to city council in LA and then to Congress, which was Edward Ball. So that was the legacy that they had. Uh, my mother had worked on the Viva Kennedy campaign you know, when, when John Kennedy ran for, uh, for president. And then uh, the UFW was heavily involved in the Robert Kennedy campaign, right? Uh, there's this great scene where uh, Robert Kennedy, right before he's assassinated, my mother's standing right next to him. And some of the last words that he mentioned was thanking Caesar and my mother and the UFW for helping him win the California primary. So politics had always been incorporated as part of our DNA in, in, in our union life and our personal life. We had always uh, supported candidates, um, particularly Latino candidates, in walking precincts and help raise money, but we had never done it for ourselves. And so in 2016, uh, the Democratic Party here locally, and of course the Democratic Central uh, Congressional Campaign Committee, the DCCC, uh, reached out to me and asked me to run uh, against uh, Congressman Valadeo, uh, who's the current congressman, and to run for that seat. And so in our mind, we felt that it's just an extension of the work that we do. Uh, I had never really uh, sort of put myself personally out there. And so um, after thinking about it, speaking to folks, we thought that we would be successful. We, we wouldn't have done it if, if we didn't feel we were successful. But it was a little bit different because now I was responsible for launching a campaign, for managing a campaign, uh, for raising money for the campaign, which is a little bit different than just signing up and volunteering to walk a precinct on the weekend or registering voters, that kind of stuff. Uh, in college, I was very active. Uh, my committee, while I was in college, we registered 4,000 new voters in Kern County. So we were always still very active. I was part of METCHA. I was I'm a political science major. That was my degree in college. I think it's my background in terms of how I was raised. We were taught early on, and any of us, all of us that grew up in the union, I think have the same sense of responsibility and the same commitment of having a purpose in life, and that purpose is to serve others. We as children didn't have a choice. You know, this was, this was sort of uh, laid upon us, right, without our parents asking us, hey, is this something you want to be a part of, right? And that sort of uh, assumption is sort of passed on generationally now, right? Even here in Campesino, you know, we have 
you know, the grandson of Cesar Chavez here in Bakersfield. And in a lot of the organizations that make up the farm worker movement, you know, there, there are the children and the grandchildren uh, of the farm worker leaders. And so I think that uh, knowing that there are people who are being oppressed, knowing that there's injustice in the world, and knowing that there's inequality, uh, you know, uh, you know, against people of color, LGBTQ, uh, just, you know, and a lot of those people are our relatives, our brothers, our sisters, our neighbors, right? And so knowing that uh, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done in the world, it's easy to get up in the morning, to go to work, to draft a 20-page complaint, to respond to a 40-page motion, to file a lawsuit against somebody who's discriminated against a worker because uh, they were Latino or because they were medically injured on the job. A lot of my work is dealing with nonprofit organizations and putting together nonprofit organizations and representing them, right? You know, and nonprofit organizations such as Radio Campesina, they help thousands and thousands of people on a daily basis. And I like to think I'm an extension of that, right? If I can help a nonprofit um, build its base, either in the legal sense or, 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 or keep them uh, compliant uh, in a governmental sense, I know that that nonprofit organization is going to provide services or educate the community or in Campesina sense, educate the, their, their listeners as to their rights. And they're helping hundreds of thousands of people on a daily basis. And so knowing that, hey, I can contribute to making that that goal of success, even if it's just for a day, then it's easy to get up and go to work. Well, I didn't choose to be Latino, right? I was dealt this hand of, hey, you're brown, and I'm really brown. My grandmother was a, a Mexicana immigrant that came in as an orphan. Knowing that, um, that Latinos growing up were, uh, were uh, chastised and punished for speaking Spanish, you know, I don't know if my language is Spanish or, or, uh, or Aztec or, you know, Mayan, you know, but knowing that we were viewed uh, and condemned as second class citizens, then that sort of, you know, that lights a fire in you. Especially us as children of the farm workers movement, we were made to believe that none of that's going to hold us back, that we have a voice. And so we just have to be louder, right? And we have to be. Uh, more insistent and we have to be more uh, greater advocates in that role that's a pillar of the civil rights movement right we my generation uh, were born out of the Chicano movement right I call myself a Chicano right we felt that uh, we had something to prove and we still have something to prove right Kern County High School District the largest high school district in the state of California majority of the population is minorities yet how many people of color do we have as principals and administrators, right? Very few, if any, right? And so that's an indication that how do we expect these people to be sympathetic to the needs and understand uh, people's lives, uh, you know, people that look like me, people that were raised like me, people who are poor, right? Um, the last couple of years, my daughter and I were coaches for mock trial at Foothill High School, the poorest high school in Kern County, right? And our students didn't have computers. Our, our students didn't know how to type. How are they gonna compete with students from the more wealthier communities who have AP classes, right? They're just as smart. They just were also dealt with a, a bad hand. And, you know, so we want to be able to make the, the playing field even. And it's, we got a long way to go before it's gonna be even, right? And, you know, every day we hear about uh, people who pay off uh, school administrators to get their kids in school, right? How is a poor kid from, you know, from Arvin supposed to compete with that, right? So uh, I think it made me angry, you know, not because I resented being raised or growing up a Latino. It made me angry because I was viewed different. A lawyer asked me one time, I was closing a deal in San Francisco, and the lawyer asked me, she goes, Mr. Huerta, how long have you been in this country? Because your English is really good. And, you know, I was embarrassed for her because I almost wanted to tell her, hey, you know, that is a 
BS question and you should go jump off a ship or a mountain or something like that, right? But you know, I didn't, and, and I didn't want to embarrass her because I knew she was coming from a place of ignorance. And so much of the non-Latino community is coming from a place of ignorance. They don't understand, they have no con concept of the challenges that poor people face on a day-to-day -day basis. We're a traumatized community, right? And they don't understand that. My response to her was, oh, I've been here for about 200 years. How about your family? You know, and that's the truth. We've been here forever, right? My mother is 10th generation, uh, you know, uh, in, the, in the U.S. before it was the U.S., New Mexico and, 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 and Texas and, and, and that part of, of, of our country, right? And I think there's just so much ignorance out there that we as Latinos have an obligation to educate the non-Latino community that we are people that are entitled to the same benefits, the same dignity as other folks in this country. Oh, well I've had so many, so that's not an easy <laughs> answer. You know, our parents, um, like I told you before, while my mother was organizing farm workers, my father was organizing community health clinics. And so to see that they were speaking to the same community, but from different initiatives, right? Collective bargaining, uh, um, healthcare, right? Which are both critically fundamental uh, in terms of having a healthy community. Uh, but you know, when you saw Caesar and knowing that the ag community was trying to kill him, they hired a, 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 an assassin to kill Caesar. You know, the message there is, uh, what is he doing that would get somebody so angry that they would want to end the person's life, right? And then you would see Caesar uh, willing to sacrifice his own life when he would fast, right? Uh, to convince people that the farm workers movement was a movement of nonviolence, and that if we, if, we, if we took up arms, that that would only give the, the, the ag community, the community that we we're trying to organize, a reason to equally reciprocate in a violent way, right? People like uh, Gandhi and Martin Luther King, you know, those, we were exposed to those, um, those great human beings at an early age, you know? So when you see people who are willing to adopt that philosophy and that way of life, you know, uh, my mother and Caesar and, and, and others, Richard Chavez, you know, uh, other uh, leaders of the farm worker movement, you know, um, I, I would have to say both Caesar and my mother, you know, really, uh, because they were so passionate about their work, right? They just like, they were not going to give in, you know, one centennial of a cent in order to, 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 to be successful at what they were doing. And they're both working so hard. Oh my God, they still work hard. My mother's 93, she's going to be 94 next month. And she still gets up. She's in LA today, um, meeting with uh, uh, Senator Butler. Right? She's, she's, you know. And, and, if, and if Caesar was alive, I'm sure Caesar would still be trying to figure out ways. And be, Caesar was very creative in thinking about different, different ways in terms of making the union successful. And Caesar planted these seeds for a successful union. The UFW is still here and is still winning elections and just got a law passed last year for car check representation. Right? So. Um, you know, and knowing um, that they sacrificed so much, you know, including their families, right, um, to, to achieve their goals, not for themselves, nothing was for themselves, not a single thing. My mother doesn't get a, a pension from the union. Caesar never asked for anything, you know, uh, from the union, right? They lived on donated food and donated clothing, right? And, it was the supporters out there who, who also really helped them be successful because they knew they could go to any community and they could rely upon supporters in that community and farm workers to help them achieve whatever the, the agenda was for that particular day. So I, I'd say both Caesar and my mother were really inspirational in, in making me who I am today. I'd say do it. If you want to be an activist, then 99% uh, of the job is showing up, right? Somebody calls you up and says, hey, uh, we need to protest about what's happening in Palestine, show up, right? Um, 
If it means walking precincts on a weekend, then show up. You know, once you get there, the work is easy, right? And uh, to not be embarrassed, not be ashamed. You know, I grew up as a pretty shy person, so I was always a little reserved. Don't be reserved. Get out there, uh, speak your piece, uh, team up with other people that share the same uh, community, uh, equity, political values as you have and do it, right? And there's such a great sense of satisfaction once you, once you get stuff done. You know, I still love to walk precincts. You know, I'd rather go walk precincts than go to court, you know, any day of the week, right? I, I'll, I'll sit in front of a market and register voters. I don't care, right? Um, but I think just uh, be committed to it, right? To as much as you can, when you can, uh, life obligations are going to sometimes take priorities, and, and that's understandable. But I think that, you know, if you have to drag your kid, my mother drug us everywhere, right? And my mother would tell Ken and Somaji, you know, from the Domestic Workers Union, you know, what's more important, uh, 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 having a job to buy shoes for your kid, your children, or being on the picket line so that we can make sure that other people have jobs to buy shoes for their children, right? You know, and so I think. Uh, reflecting on who you are as a person and what your purpose is here in life and then just be committed to being an activist because uh, the Lord says every opportunity is an organizing every moment is an opportunity organizing opportunity right every moment is an organizing opportunity that means every single moment right so go talk to your friends and your family members you know I get calls every day can you help with this and then I try to come up with 10 other ideas yeah but did you think about this and this and you know maybe we can do this um, do this ask and make it tenfold so we can get more people involved because now you're building a base and it's all about your uh, life connections and people that you meet and you carry those for the rest of your life I used to think hey I'm gonna be in New York and I'm just gonna meet these people, I'm here for this campaign, and then I will never see them again. But every day I run into circles and people that I met 10 years ago, uh, 50 years ago, and calling me and saying, hey, have you thought about how you might be able to help in, in doing this? You know, join community boards. Use your talents to help these community-based organizations accomplish their community social initiative. Si se puede, woo, orale. <laughs>